is why you can have joy. We give him glory today. I got a Christmas gift for you. It's right on the screen. What does Ephesians 4, 7 say? You can read it with me. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Let's read it one more time. But unto every one of us
season is about to change on December 21st. It's going to become from fall to winter. Can y'all hear me? I said the season is about to change on December 21st. It's going to go from fall to winter, right? But God just told me you don't have to wait till December 21st. Your praise can change your season. This is a season. This is a season changing praise.
was hoping that some of y'all just gave him a, what they call a Braxton Hicks praise. You just gave him a false labor praise because it was too soft. But when a woman gives birth, she's got to get ugly. I ain't never seen nobody give a cute birth. And some of y'all, this is the way y'all praise is. But that's not a season changer praise. That's a Braxton Hicks praise. That's a false labor pay praise. What God wants you to do is get out your comfort zone and give him the craziest and best praise you can give him. So I tell you.
Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Anybody glad to celebrate a change of season on this Sunday morning? Hallelujah. Come on, get up out of your seats. Do me a favor. Go find somebody and let them know that you're in the right place at the right time. Welcome home. Welcome to refuge. Welcome to the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Liberty. I don't know about you, but I feel like dancing and screaming and shouting. Give God praise for our senior pastor, first lady being in the building today. Of course, I do thank God for my wife who's running around here somewhere, and getting food ready and doing t-shirts and all those kind of things. And of course, we thank God for each and every one of you. Give yourselves a hand for being where you are supposed to to be today. Thank God that he has ushered us into this yes, moment yes, yes, yes. where we are able to participate in the worship experience in a, a tangible way. We're getting ready to enter into our time of giving tithes and offering. And you should be excited because this is how you prove to God how much you love him. This is where you get to issue and do what he said and open up the windows of heaven yeah. and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And I am certain that this is what the Lord wants to do for us and through us and in us. And if you need an envelope, simply slip up your hand and we will be glad to get those to you don't need an envelope that you're giving electronically today, please do so via your app or you can just kind of send that text message to the number 77977. I've been telling y'all for the last two weeks that I'm already, I'm already in March of 2020, but I cannot wait for what God is going to do for the next 16 days of this year. Luke chapter 1, rather familiar passage concerning the Christmas story, beginning at verse number 5. When you have it, go ahead and say amen. amen. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, the course of Abiah and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they were both now well stricken in years. It came to pass that while he, while Zacharias executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled fear from the him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. 
many of the children of Israel, he shall turn to the Lord their God. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and make ready the people prepared for the Lord. <clears throat> Zechariah said to the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, and stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my word, which shall be fulfilled in their season. The word of the Lord is rich, Amen. it is powerful, it is blessed, and our thought for today is put up or shut up. Come on now. Put up or shut up. Spirit of the living God, we are grateful for the words you have prepared today. Thank you that you have a word for your people. Prepare now your people to receive the word. And may the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight, Lord, my strength, my and redeemer. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. He will, being visited by the ghost of his former business partner, who himself is bound by heavy chains and money boxes, representative of a life full of avarice, a life full of greed and selfishness. Ebenezer's former business partner is a man named Jacob. And he informs him that if he does not change his ways, that Ebenezer will soon find a similar fate and be forced to carry around much heavier chains during his lifetime. I find it fitting that in this particular story, Scrooge is visited by a man named Jacob, who carries the same name of the biblical patriarch who himself went through a significant transformation after being visited by the angel of the Lord. I'm sure some of you no doubt are regulars in the supernatural visitation department. However, most of us are not. And if there was ever a time when regular people experience irregular encounters, it is during Christmas time as evidenced by the first Christmas. When we recount Luke's story of Christmas, it doesn't even begin with Mary, doesn't begin with Joseph, doesn't begin even with Jesus. It begins with the story of a man, a priest named Zacharias, who was married to a woman named Elizabeth, who we are told both of these people were righteous people before God, but they were childless because Elizabeth was barren. The Bible teaches us that they had lived right before God for a lot of years, yet they had not produced any fruit comes. Elizabeth, the woman, the bride, was incapable of producing fruit. And to complicate matters even further, the Bible says that both of them were old, as we are told that they were both well stricken in years. For me, there is a tremendous tension presented in the text in the setup here because we have two people who we are told specifically are people who have walked uprightly for God. They are people who have pleased the Lord. They please God, yet they do not have any idea how to be productive. They know what to do to produce, but there was a deficiency that is preventing them. There was a deficiency that has prevented them from producing. And now they've reached the age where producing a child seems impossible. It's even somewhat different from the Abraham and Sarah motif because neither one of them has the ability to help the other one become Productive, And these are people who have pleased God all of their lives. Their situation has reached the point of human impossibility, which if you read the text carefully, you will find is exactly where God wants them to be. The witness in your spirit should be that when your situation reaches the point of human impossibility, that is exactly where God wants you 
to be. They are in a situation that they are powerless to do anything about. All of their good works, all of their praying, all of their fasting, all of their sowing uh, still has not produced a seed in their lives, still has not produced a harvest in their lives, and they are suffering because uh, of their own deficiencies. And the harsh reality is uh, that sometimes we find ourselves in relationship. We find ourselves connected Connected to people who are the very reason we have not received what we desire most. Zacharias is married to a woman who cannot give him children. He's connected to somebody that is preventing him from being productive, yet he can't do anything about it. And sometimes we are connected to people who are standing in our way. But does anybody understand that the spirit and the power of God laughs at impossible situations? Human impossibility says you cannot survive a fiery furnace heated up seven times hotter than it was. But divine possibility laughs and says, I will literally show up in the flame and take both the heat and the smell out of the fire. Human impossibility says you cannot walk on water. Divine possibility laughs and says, I will escort you on the water back to the boat and then when we get back to the boat, I will make the storm that you're in cease from raging. I need to tell somebody, the reason your storm hasn't stopped yet is because you're still walking with Jesus back to the boat. But when you get there, not only will you see the miracle of how far you have come, but you'll be amazed that you never thought you could get as far as you have. Human impossibility says you need a degree. You need a credit score. You need more experience. But God, stop me here with the message of divine possibility to let you know that for with God, not with a degree, not with a 750 credit score, not with the right references, but if you are with God, if God before me, who can be against me? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. There is nothing too hard for God. So here it is. We are in the season of Christmas and we find that sometimes pleasing God is not enough to produce in our life situations. That doing the right thing, living a life that seems to be representative of what God says he wants us to be sometimes does not bring us the very thing that we want. And so we are introduced to what happens during the Christmas season by recalling that sometimes God wants you to understand that you're not the reason for this blessing. That the reason you're about to experience the greatest Christmas of your life is because God has made a divine decision to bless you. And so we see something very similar in the Christmas story that there are these supernatural visitations of angels who insert themselves into the lives of people and change their lives forever. We have an angel talking to Zacharias. We have an angel talking to Mary. We have angels talking to the shepherds because God says I'm bringing something to you that is so special that is beyond human understanding and rationality. So before we even get to the angel that comes to Zechariah, we find something of great significance that this event happened
Jones to Zachariah while he is functioning in his role as a priest. The Bible makes it clear that he is a priest. And for those of you who may not understand, by this time in Israel's history, there were probably anywhere from 18,000 to 20,000 men who were operating in the office as the priest. And so when the Bible tells us that his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, what is being communicated to us is something very special and unusual. Luke is communicating to us that this is probably the one and only time in his life that he has been chosen to essentially win the priest lottery, if you will. To have the specific opportunity to enter into the Holy of Holies and burn incense before God. You understand that if there's 20,000 of us that are functioning as priest. Everybody can go and burn incense in the holies of holies. And so what they would do is they would cast lots and the lucky winner would have what was known as this once in a lifetime, probably never going to occur again, opportunity to enter into the most sacred place where you could minister before the Lord. For some of you, I need to drop this because by the time we get to Christmas, was God wants you to know uh, that you have been chosen for a once uh, in a lifetime realm uh, of ministry for him. That you've been waiting all uh, of your life it seems uh, but the moment of choice uh, is upon you. You didn't work hard enough to get it. Uh, you didn't pray enough to get it but God uh, is making a divine decision uh, and he wants me to tell somebody uh, that before the season changes so there is a divine moment of choice upon your life. And so when the lot falls on this old man, we find there is a multitude of people who are waiting and praying without ceasing in anticipation of what report he's going to bring back from being in the presence of the Lord. They're waiting to hear his report, his story, that what is going to happen, waiting with anticipation. It is uh, probably the most exciting experience uh, for this priest and uh, his first lady uh, when he now goes into uh, a place where he's alone with God uh, and God sends him uh, a supernatural visitation, an angel, uh, a messenger from the Lord uh, who declares to him these uh, words. Fear not. Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. You, sir, in your old age are about to be a daddy. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but this has to be one of the craziest scenes that anybody has ever experienced in their life. Not only did I win the priest lottery, but while I'm ministering before God, God sends a special message letting me know you don't got to be afraid. Your prayer is heard. No matter how long it has been that you've prayed no matter how many years you've had to live without it, no matter how much the situation seems to dictate that it will not happen, don't you be afraid. Your prayer is heard. Look at your neighbor and say, he heard your prayer. If you're not careful as you are receiving this word, you will miss the subtle nuance of what the angel said in Luke 1 13 Gabriel said Zechariah your prayer not your prayers but the one thing that you have been fasting and praying and seeking God about the one secret desire that nobody really knows but you the one yes that you need to revolutionize your life is not being heard not going to be answered but your prayer is past 
repentance uh, heard. Uh, and if my prayer is already heard, uh, that simply means uh, that my answer is uh, on the way. Uh, I think you're going to help me preach. Uh, look at your neighbor on the other side uh, and say, neighbor, it's uh, on. That means that the answer is uh, on the way. Uh, you should be smacking somebody by now. Because uh, God told me to tell you uh, that the very it's not being sent from the mailman, but it's being sent straight from the throne room of God himself. And when God says, I'm sending my answer, there is nobody who can stop your answer from coming to your room. If you know that your prayer has been heard and that your answer is on the way. The challenge becomes how should you respond until you receive it? Well, if y'all are going to look at me the way y'all are looking, it's a good thing God raised me with this word because the text is tailored to teach us that if you're not bold enough to declare through faith the favor of God over your life, then don't say anything at all. That's why y'all ain't talking back to me. Because you're not ready to declare. But that's alright. Understand the prophets and the prophetic word comes to Zacharias and he receives an instruction to prophetically speak over what he is about to receive. You ain't catch that. The angel says your wife shall bear thee a son. That is the prophecy. Now, Zach, you shall call his name John. That is the instruction. Y'all know how I preach. When God says a prophecy, he always sends an instruction. And if God is telling you what he's going to do, you got to pay very close attention to what he wants you to do. And here it is. You're supposed to be decreeing and declaring, I'm about to have a baby. And his name's going to be John. But the problem with Zach is that he did not believe. Catch this. He did not believe that he could receive the very miracle that he was praying about. Oh God, help us. Zach did not believe that he could receive the very thing that he was praying for. How many of us people of God function with the same dichotomy? You understand the same duality. You understand the same double-mindedness. Oh, you understand the same bipolar spirituality who pray prayers to a God that we don't believe is going to answer the prayers that we're praying. You need to understand God does answer prayer. But what God wants you to know today is that it is going to happen. But don't you kill it. Don't you take it to the abortion clinic by responding in doubt. And since Zach couldn't believe it, the angel said, since you cannot speak what I've asked you to speak, I'm going to place your mouth on silent for the next nine months. The caution that the text presents is this Christmas season. If you can't respond in faith, don't say anything at all. But the challenge that you need to embrace is that you need to pray for something so big that when God does answer it, it literally leaves you speechless. You don't got to say nothing. Just pull up with the car with the numbers on the back. You don't got to say a word. Just invite us over to the housewarming. You don't got to say nothing. Just ride up to the job and decide to become the owner. You should pray a prayer to the Lord so impressive that when he answers it, all you can do is shake your head and raise your hand. And if that is not enough, you need to understand that when you can't pray those prayers, that God is able to pray for you. I feel like preaching.
future now. Huh? See, there's some things huh, that you think you know how to pray about, huh? but there's some other stuff, huh? some real big stuff, huh? that you don't even have the words huh, to articulate. Huh? Those things are forged huh, in the spirit huh? because we don't know huh, how to pray as we ought. Huh? There are prayers huh, that produce answers huh? ah, that eyes have not seen, huh? that ears huh? have not heard, huh? that have not even entered huh, into the hearts of men, huh? that are already prepared, huh? but you don't understand them, huh? so how can you pray for them? Huh? They're the types of prayers huh, that come with the spirit huh, making intercession for us huh, with stuff that we don't even understand. Huh? These are the types of prayers huh, that the spirit prays through you huh, to himself, huh? the fact uh, that he is able to do exceeding uh, uh, woo, uh, abundantly uh, above uh, all that you can ask uh, or think. Uh, you got to have the Holy Ghost uh, in order to pray these uh, types of prayers. Because uh, when you start praying, uh, then God starts answering. Uh, I'm done. Uh, and if that's not enough uh, to make you shout, uh, you should really be able to shout when you understand uh, ah, that the Bible says uh, that the angel told Zacharias, uh, I'm not letting you speak uh, because I told you uh, that John is coming, uh, that the boy is going to be filled uh, with the Holy Ghost uh, in his mother's womb. Uh, he's going to be one of the greatest uh, preachers that ever lived. Uh, you just wanted a son, uh, but God
that Gabriel says to Zachariah, not just about the gift, but the ghost of Christmas present was going to fill that boy in the womb. This priest of God, who's not just received one gift of a lifetime, but two, says, well, how will I know that this thing is coming to pass? As if you really need more evidence than literally talking to the angel Gabriel. And so what Gabriel does is he said, oh, okay. How will you know? Whitney Houston, I'm not going to let you say nothing for nine months. So when you want to say something, the reason you're going to know that it's true, you can't talk. What the Lord told me to tell you was that if you read the story, you'll find that as soon as the baby was born, his mouth opens, and not only was he able to praise God, but he starts prophesying, and a revival takes place at the baby's birth. But it took him nine months to be able to open up his mouth. You know what the Lord told me to tell you? That for every praiser that opened up his mouth now, God is accelerating the next nine months of your life. And stuff that's going to take you till next September, you will have it nine no December. Because you didn't wait, God said, I gotta wait.
action. Fulfill. Building. God is 
releasing impossible blessings into your life. If you receive that, just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I receive. I receive my favor. I receive the increase in my faith. I receive an increase in my health. I receive an increase in my finances. I receive improved relationships. I receive all of what you have for me. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Worthy to be praised. I have all power in my hands. Do you understand? Do you understand? Can you?
set free. I've been made whole. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I dare you just to, I, yeah, yeah. Just touch yourself and say, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'm a success. I'm blessed and highly favored. As great as it is, he's 
still not finished. In this spirit of worship, I want you to help me so that I can get you out of here today. It's always better from now until we're going to be tangibly blessing our leaders during the Christmas season. God supplies the needs of those who bless the leaders. It does not matter how small the gift I want you to give with this thought in mind I want you to give it believing God this is going to be the smallest gift that I ever give it's going to be the smallest gift that I ever give because as I bless them you're going to bless me to be able to increase every single time. We're not a large ministry, but God is shaping us to become giving people. Yes. Because He knows that as we begin to grow and we're able to reach more people, that it's going to magnify His name. Cannot be functioning in the blessing of giving to others if we don't give to our own. So I want you to help me. There's a sweet spirit in this place. I want you to find the best gift that you can today as we sow to the lives of our leaders. Because we know that God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us. So get that offering. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God is going to release some things as you release some things. He is going to bless you.